Ever feel like your emotions control you? Anger flaring in your chest. The rush of happiness that makes everything brighter. That crushing wave of sadness that seems to drag you under. We think we know our emotions inside out. They feel primal, undeniable. A fundamental part of being human. But what if it's all an illusion? What if every feeling you've ever had isn't some unchanging truth that defines you as you, but simply your brain's best guess at what's going on? That the way that we've understood emotions for centuries is not just incomplete, but radically wrong. And this myth, it could be sabotaging your life in ways that you can't even comprehend. Today I'm not just going to challenge everything you think about emotions, but I'm going to show you how to break free from them. Turns out, those expressions that you just saw and instantly recognized are not universal. Cultures around the world interpret and express emotions in wildly different ways. Many Westerners might link a wrinkled nose and a slightly opened mouth as disgust. However, some indigenous tribes in Papua New Guinea interpret this exact same expression as a sign of aggression, preparing for a fight. While in parts of East Asia, frowning that furls the brows is often a sign of intense concentration. But again, Western viewers might misinterpret this as disapproval or annoyance. So expressions of emotion are not universal. They are locally defined by culture. If emotions are as basic as we think, then there should be clear patterns in the brain. Brain scans should light up like a Christmas tree in a specific way to signify anger and a totally different way for something like love. But that's actually not what's observed at all. Thousands and thousands of brain scans later and there is no neural signature for any of these emotions. Fear, anger, happiness. The search for emotion specific brain activity is neuroscience version of searching for unicorns. Many have tried but the truth is your emotions aren't simply hardwired signals. They're actually far more interesting than that. Think about a moment of intense fear. That pounding harsh, the shortness of breath. It feels inarguable that you are terrified in that instance. But what if that same physical sensations were happening because you were just about to give a thrilling performance or a presentation? Or you were rushing to see a loved one? This common idea that emotions are undeniable accurate facts about what's happening around you, it's simply not true. Our brains are fundamentally prediction machines. They use every bit of information available, your body's internal state, your memories, even cultural norms that you've observed, to guess what you might need next in that current moment. Those guesses create a cascade of physical changes and sensations that we label as our feelings. But much like a weather forecast, emotional forecasts can be dead wrong, leading to reactions that sabotage us in the moment. Our myths about emotions all spawn from a gigantic myth that's still commonly believed about our brain as a whole. You've probably heard the idea that our brain is composed of layers. There's a reptilian part that's driven by instinct, then an emotion mammalian bit, and all of it is being tamed by our incredibly advanced prefrontal cortex. That's all completely wrong. We love neat categories, lizard equals instinct, human equals logic, but evolution is just far messier than that. It's just not that simple. The problem with what's called the triune brain model isn't that the brain just doesn't work in such a simplified way, but it ignores a very basic evolutionary fact. We share a lot of the same neurological building blocks with these different creatures that we supposedly evolved past. Our nervous systems have almost identical developmental blueprints. We aren't actually particularly unique. Our brains didn't overwrite these primitive systems. They built on them over many, many, many millions of years in intricate ways that simple layers just cannot explain. Modern neuroscience paints a far messier, but far more fascinating picture of how your brain actually works. That's what you're gonna learn about in this video. So if your feelings aren't coming from an ancient lizard core and being tamed by your advanced human lobes, then where do they come from? And why do they often feel so impossible to ignore? The answer has to do with how our brain processes the world around us and its true purpose which is little known by anybody. This sounds radical but let's forget everything that you think you know about how your brain works. It turns out that your brain isn't some fancy camera that's recording the world around you as it happens. It's more like a fortune teller, always trying to predict the future and anticipate your needs. This might sound bizarre, but neuroscience is clear on this. Your brain's main job is to make guesses and predictions about your future scenarios so it can manage your body's resources. 
Think of this like a financial controller who makes predictions about the economy and then makes decisions about the optimal way to divide your resources to maintain your wealth over time. This is exactly what your brain has to do, but it has to maintain a wealth of calories, oxygen, glucose, and thousands of other macromolecules within your body. This is a staggeringly difficult task, as each of these molecules, which is vital for survival, has only a very small, acceptable range which is conducive to supporting life. So to do this, it can't just be budgeting in the moment, it has to be making predictions about the future. How does it make these predictions? Well, it's based on your past experiences. An example of this occurs every time we drink water. It actually takes 20 minutes for water to be absorbed and actually have its hydration effects. But when we drink water, we feel immediately hydrated. This is because our brain knows that the last time we drank a colorless liquid that smelt and looked like water, we became hydrated. So your brain just goes ahead and triggers those hydration pathways ahead of time before anything has actually been absorbed. This constant forecasting of your body's budget is the miracle of the brain and is the true purpose of emotions and where they actually originate. Let me give another example. Everyone's experienced the bodily state of jittery nerves lots of times. It could be excitement about a fun date or it could be the first hints of you getting sick. Your body is sending you a basic body budget message and the brain is making its best guess and categorizing it into certain buckets based on your current circumstances and past experience. This means that the same nervous bodily sensation can be categorized in completely different ways in different moments. In her incredible book, How Emotions Are Made, Lisa Feldman Barrett gave a great story to highlight this point even further. She was on a date in college with a guy that she was a bit uncertain on, but on the date she felt a tingling feeling in her stomach, which she interpreted in that moment as butterflies, and this increased her attraction to the man while on the date. It turns out this was a dramatic miscategorization as she was about to come down with horrible food poisoning. When she recovered, she had absolutely no feelings at all for the poor guy on the date. A good example of the body sending a signal that the brain misinterprets in the moment and it having pretty drastic effects triggering a cascade of the pair bonding neurochemical oxytocin when really it should have been reinforcing the body's immune system. So if emotions are guesses, then can they be relearned? Well, this is the core idea of this video and one of the most powerful takeaways that I've ever gotten from neuroscience with very real world implications. Here's why your lizard brain and heart versus head mental model is setting you up for failure. Remember those predictions your brain spins up without your permission? They create what feel like uncontrollable reactions. You see a spider and the terror is immediate. But fear isn't the spider, it's the web of predictions based on past experience and culture that your brain fires off to keep your body safe. But if we know that, you can actually interrupt that runaway train before that cascade occurs. It might take work to notice a panicked thought arising versus letting it snowball, but when you treat emotions as information, a puzzle to solve instead of something that's happening to you, you become more than a passenger in your own head. You regain control. We slap labels on what we feel all the time, but those labels aren't neutral. Studies show that the words you use to categorize your internal state has a profound effect on the way that you experience it. Words like stressed and overwhelmed tell your brain that the game is already lost. Alison Wood Brooks of Harvard Business School has done numerous studies on emotion recategorization, mostly in the area of anxiety and performance for presentations. People who were asked to declare, I am excited before public speaking, had demonstrably improved performances compared to those who just said that they were calm. This isn't a type of forced positivity. It's shifting your self predictions to build an outcome that you actually want. Next time that a deadline stress tries to strangle you, instead of this is impossible, I'm freaking out, try, okay, here's the challenge, time to switch on and get laser focused. By engaging in new experiences and paying attention to the subtle body signs before an emotion gets amplified and deliberately challenging the stories that your brain auto generates, you build new prediction pathways in your brain. It takes work, but the ability to manage emotional turbulence isn't an illusion, it's based on solid neuroscience. Think of your brain like a forest. Those well-worn pathways of panic and frustration, those are the trails that you end up on by habit. But you can start carving out new routes. It might be small to start. By pausing next time you're about to spiral and ask, is my heart pounding from fear or that second cup of coffee I shouldn't have had? 
Notice the difference between how your body feels when you're truly angry versus just annoyed. Those small distinctions chip away at the power of automatic emotion loops and start to recategorize those feelings in your brain. Imagine taking those autopilot feelings you fight so hard against and putting them under a microscope. Are they based on old experiences that don't serve you anymore? Are they tied to narratives you hold about yourself that need to be questioned? I always fail is a terrible prediction that your brain loves to pull out in every circumstance. Prove it wrong with tiny wins and then bigger ones. This isn't easy, it's a skill like any other. Some you get stronger at over time. There will be setbacks, but as you build more awareness, more vocabulary for the subtle states beneath the big emotions, you'll find yourself reacting less often and choosing where you focus your energy more skillfully. That's emotional freedom. That's reclaiming the driver's seat in your own mind. I really do believe in the power of recategorizing your emotions and gaining control over the signals that your body sends you. I think it can be immensely powerful in whatever aspect of your life you wish to improve. Thank you so much for watching the video. Subscribe for more neuroscience content and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.